So, in this video we're going to break down a little bit of Panama from uh, Van Halen, 1984 album. And uh, there's a lot, uh, a lot to this song, a lot of different parts, but uh, we'll start with the intro. And what we're going to do is, it's going to be basically a movable version of a E major chord, which is just going to be on the 7th and 9th fret, 7th fret A string and 9th fret, your 3rd finger is going to play the D, G, and B string here, which would give you the E major triad. And then have your pinky ready, because your pinky is going to have to hit that note right there on the 10th fret of the B string. And as you play this, you may notice that as the chords happen, Eddie keeps a constant low note going almost with his right hand. Kind of like that. It's always... Always in action. And so that other chord, that third one there, is going to be basically what would be a B major, uh, which is just your third finger on the ninth fret of the D string, your second finger on the eighth fret of the G string, and your first finger on the seventh fret of the B string. And you'll play that with a bar like that, so you can so you can keep that going there with your right hand. Back to the first chord, and then back to that, and then this one more time, and then slide the whole thing down a whole step to D. And you're using the same basic forms there, that form, that form, and that form. And the whole time that's happening again, you get the, the bottom rhythm note that just stays constant. And that's followed up by a dive bomb. Um, the G string open just dives descending. And then the whole thing happens again. pick slide into what is a C sharp minor chord which is just like playing an A minor except you're gonna bar that and bring it up to a C sharp and then he's keeping that bass note again going now what that is you're basically going to take these three fingers off and this first finger is just going to bar on the fourth fret of the D string, the G string, and the B string. And your, your, your middle finger is going to hit this note on the fifth fret of the B string. Open A string. And then slide that whole thing down to the A position or the second fret. So that whole segment is... Ending on an A chord there. Now he gets a little artificial harmonic with this on the second fret of the A string. And you'll notice with artificial harmonics, a lot of different ways you can do that. Um, essentially, what what's happening is as the pick plucks the string, the meat of your thumb barely touches the string almost at the exact same time that the pick does. And that's kind of a trick to achieve, but essentially that you got to hold your thumb real close to the bottom of the pick when you do that, and then run them both across the string at the same time. And if done correctly, you'll get a heart artificial harmonic, and it, which harmonic you get will depend on where between the neck and the bridge your right hand is, and this this harmonic will change on, uh, on any note. So. And the more gain you have, the more distortion you have on your amp, the more apparent that note change would be. So 
so they can be hard to hit but really cool when you get them and that's a lot of times why they sound different every time you know it's just your hands in a different spot or your skin touches the string a little bit differently and you you end up getting a, either a semi harmonic or a full harmonic or sometimes you can hear a little bit of the note ringing with the harmonic or sometimes just a harmonic in this particular instance right there on the second fret of the A string and then go back into the C sharp chord and so what he does there is he's holding that C sharp minor chord you're just going to take your middle finger off of the B string and do that little strum back and forth on the from the B string and the G string there to a B or a, yeah a B major again and then slide that back down to A once again and then you end up on a B note right there on the second fret of the A string and then you start this cool little thing he does. What that is is an open A, uh, I'm sorry, open high E string, and then on the fourth fret you're going to use your two fingers. You know, I usually just use my second finger on the G string, my third finger on the B string, and careful not to mute the high E string. And what you're going to do is mute those with your hands so they don't ring together. And what Eddie does, and I, and I wasn't there, I don't know exactly what he did, but the high E string isn't always really muted, and sometimes it tends to ring a little more. And then he gets this into some art, into some natural harmonics, and where I hit him personally is on the fifth fret of the high E string, which creates that octave note, and then here on the fourth fret. So it's the 5th fret on the high E string, and the 4th fret of the B string, and the 4th fret of the G string. It gives you the exact same notes as if you had played those notes by pushing down on the string. And then what I'd like to do, instead of repeatedly hitting that harmonic on the G string, if you listen to the, the, the album, the B string, he gets a bit of a harmonic, and then sometimes it's the open B string, and then sometimes it's a harmonic, and sometimes it's the open B string, and it just gives this feeling like the amp's just about to explode or something, as you just don't know what's happening. You're almost getting a bit of a harmonic, but not a full harmonic, and so uh, it just gives a really cool sound. And then that jumps down into the key we're going to play the song in, which is E. And um, for the for the main chorus riff um, and this little intro before the first verse, um, the riff is basically just an E chord, a D chord, and an A chord. doing is playing an A right into a D chord and then my wrist is going to keep that bass note going like it did with, with the intro section. So you're going back and forth from an A to a D very quickly here. Now my slide there, what, I, what I'm doing is just sliding on the from the 7th fret down to the 5th fret on the a string and the D string. So it's almost like doing an A power chord down to a G power chord. And so really if we were to boil this down to power chords it would kind of look like this. But that's just not the way Eddie played. He used open strings and chords and you just get a bigger fuller sound and more of the tone of the guitar that way. So power chords, that's how you would do it. It's essentially A, D, A, D, A, A, G. But Eddie would use open strings and get a fuller sound out of it.
And so since what we have is a slide from an A to a G, Another thing that Eddie would do, and you'll hear in the song occasionally, and I couldn't tell you exactly which particular choruses he does this in, but instead of doing that little slide, he'll do, he'll hit an A chord, and then the third fret of the low E string is a G note, and it'll sound like this. So that leads you into the first verse, which is just your open A string and D string for a second, and then you make the E. Now you'll notice that this section kind of gets quiet, and uh, this is where you run into some interesting things um, that Eddie would do. Eddie, Eddie used his volume knob a lot, and rather than switch to a clean channel or, or change the amp setting or something to get a clean tone, he would just back the volume off of his guitar which wouldn't drive the amp as hard and kind of clean it up a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do now, as you've got full, full on chorus kind of sound. So backing your volume off would clean that up, but so it's just the open A and D into an E chord. And then the way I do the the next little section is you can hit the open G, B, and high E string. Really, probably sound better if you just hit the open two strings. And so what I'm doing there is basically the two open, open B and open E to an A which is just my first finger barring on the second fret of the D, G, and B string, right to a D chord, and still have the low E in the bass. And so, you know, with a little bit more gain, that would sound something like this. pick slide into an F sharp chord and what I do here it's just kind of a weird strum it's almost like he's playing an F sharp major chord with your first finger on the G string third fret sorry second finger on your third fret of the G string and then basically like a with your right hand you're just going to hit the high E string, the B string, and the G string. And then twice you're going to hit the B, the G and the D. Like this. Like that. Back into a C sharp minor. And I started out without that finger on there. It's kind of making it an add nine chord. So it's... And then you do another pick slot. And all that is, is a... Um, D note on the 5th fret of the A string, followed by the 7th fret, I'm sorry, 6th fret, 5th fret on the low E. Move that down a whole step and do it on a C, an A flat, and a G. Then an F sharp here, 2nd fret of the low E string, open E string to a B chord, power chord. Back into the riff at the intro of the song. into the main chorus riff and so the only other section of this song right now is going to be going into the solo 
because you're going to go for the, through another verse and then another pre-chorus into another chorus. Now, the second chorus going into the solo is a little different. <laughs> There's a key change for the solo into the key of B, and the way they do that is he plays... It's a, like a C add 9 chord, basically your second finger on the third fret of the A string. The D string is muted by the meat of this finger, and then the G string rings open, and then your third finger is going to play this note on the third fret of the B string, and you're going to take your first finger off and put your, I'm sorry, take your second finger off and put your first finger on the second fret of the A string, and then an A chord, back to that initial C, and then to the B. So it's going into the solo, and then coming out of the chorus that would sound like this. And so for the solo, he's going to do a cliche blues lick uh, to start with. Like that, and it's just essentially bending on, from the 9th fret of the G string up to the 11th fret of the G string. Or bending to this note here, which your first finger is going to play, and we're just going to do like an old Chuck Berry. With a little whammy bar accent. And then a fast blues lick, where what I do is typically a lick like that. It's got a lot of hammer-ons involved. Essentially, the basic premise is a downstroke on the G string, followed by an upstroke on the B string there. That's on the 7th fret. So this repetitive lick is going to be like an upstroke on the B, hammer-on and pull-off, with a downstroke on the on the G string right there on the 9th fret. And now what I'm going to do is alternate between this note here on the uh, 7th fret of the B string to this note here on the 7th fret of the high E string. It's going to sound like this. And you'll notice you don't even have to pick that note, after hitting the high E string, you can do what's called a hammer on from nowhere and just hammer that note on. And so you'll still only have a downstroke here and an upstroke here. So it's going to be like this. And slower that would be. So, and when he ends this lick, and again, I'm, this isn't note for note, I'm just, this is the way I play this solo. Uh, there's a lick that he does, it's basically just a hammer on from the 7th uh, fret to the ninth fret of the G string. And then a pull off again. And he'll bend that with his first finger up to the ninth fret. Sometimes, since my first finger is a little weaker, I'll just slide my whole hand down and bend that note with my third finger and my second finger, since they're stronger than obviously just this one finger. And then we get into a two-handed lick, where what you're going to do is bend up with your third finger on the ninth fret of the G string, and then you're going to go... bend it back down. And those notes are on the 14th, 12th, and then the 16th. With a little bit of whammy bar accents in there.
and then what that is is uh, you're kind of going to do a quick bend with, with the uh, seventh fret of the G string there, and go down like a what would be a B minor pentatonic scale, and then like a B minor blues lick, which is just climbing down chromatically on the ninth, eighth, and seventh fret of the A string. Which leads you to the little interlude. So coming out of the solo, into the interlude section of this song, uh, what you've got is... Basically starting here on the 4th fret of the D string. And we've just got to hammer onto the 5th fret, pull off back down to the 4th, and then we're going to hit the 5th fret on the A string. Now you're going to bend the 7th fret of the A string up to the 9th fret. Slide down to a B. And then do that again. And instead of bending up to this note, we're going to just go ahead and slide up to that note. And then pull off a whole step to the 7th fret, landing on a C note on the low E string, which is on the 8th fret. And then a quick little power chord. And of course, Eddie's got his volume backed off at this point to, to kind of tone down the distortion a little bit, make it a bit cleaner. I did there this is the way I do it you could do it a lot of ways it's the same thing at the beginning and what I did was I got a this F sharp note here open D string and then to an E or you could go and then you're gonna slide down play this funky F chord which is the first finger on the first fret of the low E string, and then you're going to play the octave with your third finger here on the third fret of the D string. Your middle finger is going to play the major third, which is the second fret of the A string. And then strum down the high E open, the B open, to those two notes these two fingers here have. And a little rhythmic figure. Which is kind of like the old blues, except you're going to raise your pinky up one half step here. Now you're going to play essentially a C with a flat 5, which is a C, and then an F sharp here, which will eventually get changed to this um, G note on the 5th fret of the D string, and that's going to look like this. And that time around, he just slides, uh, pulls off from the F sharp to the E and vibrato that E a little bit. to an E, an F. This is a common chord here used a lot by Eddie. This is actually a D chord with an F sharp in the bass. And the notes that aren't sounding are going to be the A string, which I have muted with the meat of my first finger. So the only notes you're really going to hear are that F sharp note, the open D string, a note on the second fret of the G string, and a D note on the third fret of the B string. So it's E, the F, that D with an F sharp in the bass, and a G, G sharp note into an A chord. And when he plays this B flat, 
the G string rings open and in the B chord. And so that whole section sounds like this. And from there on out, it's the chorus for the rest of the song. Uh, and the, the main trick with that weird B flat chord is to just mute all the strings except for the, the A string, which is the B flat note, and then the open G and let those ring together and then it's the chorus riff for the rest of the song and uh, that is Panama in a nutshell um, my take on it anyway um, as recorded by Van Halen thanks for watching hope you got something out of this video and we'll see you next time